Hi, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dr. Julian Avoa. Thanks so much for watching. So, I don't normally wear a suit, so this is a special occasion. Today is my birthday. My wife is going to take me out to lunch. We're going to go to services first, and then we're going to go to lunch. So, uh, mark the calendar. You don't normally catch me in a suit. If you want to like to watch this video, and like and watch this video. So, today I wanted to discuss a common theme uh, because we're, again, talking about biological implants and their, uh, re the reactions to them, the allergic foreign body reactions to the biological implants. And this ties into all of the biological groups. So this includes Felschi, Eshore, uh, mesh groups, the um, vertebral column uh, or vertebral implants, and, of course, it also includes dental implant group. Now, let's, let's put that aside for a second. If you have a complication or a foreign body reaction to an implant, it can have, a, have an effect on your teeth. Now, we see that in the eShort group, so I'm not sure whether or not there's a lot of uh, uh, Felshi clip followers or uh, patients that have hip implants and vertebral column implants. But this is very important. There's a significant number of patients for the eShort group that have significant problems with their teeth. Dental caries, they're losing their teeth, and they can't figure out what's going on. And that may or may not occur in the, in the Felshi clip group, in the hip implant group, uh, because a lot of patients that have hip implants are a little bit older and then they, thinking that they're, the problems that they're having with their teeth is associated with age. And again, that may be associated with it, but there is also an association of a foreign body reaction to problems with your teeth. So for all of those younger women in their 30s that are having issues with Eshore and they're losing their teeth, Here's the association that we're talking about. And if, you're ha if you happen to have a hernia mesh and you're having problems with your teeth, here's the association with that particular issue as well. So what are we talking about here? The type 4 hypersensitivity reaction that is associated with biological implants, again, I, I urge you to look up what type 4 hypersensitivity is, but basically that's a delayed response to your implant. So over time, your body becomes uh, expo well, uh, sensitive to the particular implant, especially if it's a nickel implant and the such. And uh, so what we're looking at here is that if you have a nictinol, nickel titanium or nickel implant sensitivity, titanium sensitivity, you may end up having some issues with your teeth. And I apologize, everybody's trying to, uh, to uh, send messages in on my birthday. And so if you hear a little popping, that's somebody sending me a message. So I'll get back to them in a, mo in a moment. So I wanted to tie all this together. And this also ties in for my uh, friends that are actually have issues with breast implants because type 4 hypersensitivity reaction and the um, biological implant uh, associated uh, anaplastic uh, large cell lymphoma uh, issues and the cancer associated with breast implants is also a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So here's, the, here's what's going on with your teeth. There is a, a syndrome knows, known as uh, Sjogren's syndrome, which is associated with a drying effect of the teeth, an effect, an inflammatory response of the teeth. And this is very, very similar to what happens. Sjogren's syndrome and type 4 hypersensitivity, uh, well, the symptoms adduced with both are associated with the biological implant. So if your teeth become sensitive uh, in, in to the response to the biological implant, you're, uh, the, the, you may end up having an increased risk of dental caries and also because of that, you're having an increased risk of losing your teeth. So for all of those that have eShore, Felshi clips, mesh, uh, hip implants, please uh, consider seeing your dentist about every three months rather than every six months and checking for those dental caries. And if you're having a significant number of them, if possible, please have your implant removed, such as the uh, eShore or the Felshi clip. Now, hip implants are impossible to move, remove uh, unless there's a very, very serious issue going on. So Unfortunately, that's the, the, the tie in there is the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. And the same thing applies to breast implants as a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So if you're losing your teeth or having issues with your teeth and you have breast implants in, please consider this as a, as a point of fact. So now let's go back to dental care, uh, dental implants themselves. Can dental implants cause a hypersensitivity, rea be, be associated with a hypersensitivity reaction. Absolutely. And here's the gaslighting associated with that. There are many dentists, uh, cosmetic dentists, uh, that will say that there's a very, very low risk that you're going to have a titanium allergy or a very, very low risk that you're going to have uh, a uh, 
an allergy to the ceramic implants that we're suggesting that you take or that you use, uh, even the nears, for example, in your mouth. And there is no quantitative number of, of or percentage associated with that. So you can have a very serious foreign body reaction associated with a dental implant that you're using either for a medically indicated reason or a cosmetic reason. So I just wanted to pull out one article, and I'm go again, I'm going to uh, uh, apply the link here. So let's see if you can read that. That says, Allergy Related to Dental Implant and Its Clinical Significance. This is a nine-page article, very well written, and it's just one of many. You can just Google this. I'm going to have the link here, but it, it talks about dental implants. And in the conclusion, and I can't uh, stress that in, enough related to the conclusion, is, the st is what your doctor should be telling you related to when you get a dental implant. And so if you are get if you have an eShore and you also, uh, because of that, you're losing your teeth and you want to get a dental implant, here's the deal with that. No metal or alloy is completely inert in vivo. That means in the tissue. All metals will undergo a slow removal of ions from the surface largely, largely because of local and temporal variations in microstructure and environment. Basically, wear and tear is going to make the, the implant fail, and you're going to have ions be released. The current uh, massive use of these biomaterials in the biomedical field re uh, renders it necessary to have a detailed knowledge not only of their early effects, short-term failure, but also their long-term effects with consideration that these materials remain inside the patients over long periods of time, sometimes throughout their entire life. The potential risk of corrosion and the possible detrimental consequences of its byproducts or are significant issues of clinical importance. The biologic effect of the corrosion of dental implants is an important health issue associated with metal pr prosthesis in the body. The presence of ion particles and their potential local biological effects uh, around metallic devices might affect implant outcome. A sensitive and uh, precise test w will help determine titanium hypersensitivity should it, be, should it be developed. So this is where we get into the MELISA test or the memory lymphocyte uh, test for uh, sensitivity. There's also the nickel uh, test, but all of these tests are... Sub, suboptimal as far as really proving that you have a problem. So when your doctor, when your dentist, when your cosmetic uh, dentist tells you that uh, your ceramic or your titanium alloy uh, implant is safe and effective, it may be effective but it not, may not necessarily be safe. It also leads to a uh, erosion of the, of the bone around that titanium for a certain number of patients. So here is the take-home message related to all this, and the gaslighting again. If you have a implant, any biological implant, whether or not it be a breast implant, eShore, Felsch Eclipse, uh, mesh in general, you have to be careful that you may have a systemic effect on your teeth. You may start losing teeth. You may start noticing a significant increase in dental caries, and over time, you're gonna, you can lose a lot of your teeth. Here's what's worse is that you're losing your teeth because of one implant and then you're putting in dental implants which are another biological implant. You're putting that in your mouth now. And these can erode over time. And because of this biological, now you have two biological implant affecting you through a hypersensitivity type 4 hypersensitive, hypersensitivity reaction and it's wreaking havoc on your entire body. So that means that you're going to end up having even more problems with your mouth may may even lose more teeth, you're going to feel all of those other symptoms of the hypersensitivity, such as the loss of hair, uh, brain fog, cognitive changes, Alzheimer's-like diseases, excessive weight gain, sensitivity of rashes on your skin, uh, nickel rashes. Again, that sensitivity or that rash that you may get around your neck or rash on other parts of your body that have nothing to do where, where the implant originally originated, uh, that is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. And it can be induced by taking in, uh, drinking products such as anything that has nickel in it. And there's a lot, eating chocolate, for example, might, might induce a sensitivity reaction under the systemic nickel allergy syndrome, another discussion for another day. But the fact of the matter is, if you put one biological implant in your body that's causing problems with your teeth, and then you put in another biological implant directly in the area where your teeth uh, are or are, are, are being replaced, you can end up having 
a worse situation than when you started. And the gaslighting part is that you're, either your dentist doesn't even know about this issue or the doctor is downplaying its significance. And this includes my uh, breast implant patients that are, uh, so, uh, that are worried about their, uh, their, the, the lymphoma, the T-cell lymphoma and, and uh, lymphoma cancer associated with the breast implants. Again, thanks so much for watching. Thank you, everybody, for wishing me a happy birthday. Take care. Bye-bye.